Welcome to Paramusic TV. I'm Johnny Long. Right now we will be examining the case of the Enfield Poltergeist. So I follow the signs to the end of the road. Don't let the rain make you lose control. And don't be afraid when it's time to go. It would begin for the Hodgson family around the autumn of 1977 when the children began to hear odd noises like knocks, bangs, and scratches. Peggy Hodgson believed the children were misbehaving and just not wanting to go to bed until she would finally go upstairs and see a dresser shake and slide across the floor on its own. She pushed it back in place only to have it slide back and refuse to budge when she tried to push it again. Peggy Hodgson then rounded up her children, Janet, Billy, and Margaret, and sought sanctuary at her neighbor's house. Then for the next 18 months, the family would endure round-the-clock assaults upon their peace of mind. It seemed like something changed in the early to mid-70s when The Exorcist became a surprise hit movie in 1973. Although that story is fictional, it is based on a true case that took place in the 40s. Then, in 1975, the Amityville Horror took the country's imagination after the Lutz family fled from their home after only living there for 28 days. The book was released in 1976, and the movie would come out in 79. But the Enfield Poltergeist was already a sensation in England by that time. It had made the newspaper. It was that report that would lead to the Society of Psychical Research to send Morris Gross to look into the case. After experiencing some activity in the home, Gross convinced the SPR to help him. It was a rare thing to be able to investigate such an active case. He would spend 120 days with the family during its duration. He would be joined by fellow SPR member Guy Lyon Playfair, who would eventually write this book, This House is Haunted. It is probably one of the first books written by an investigator as the case unfolded in front of him. While this case became a sort of cult classic amongst enthusiasts of the paranormal, such as myself, it would not see real notoriety in the States until the movie The Conjuring 2, or perhaps the English television series The Enfield Haunting. Morris Gross, who passed away in 2006, expressed regret about not having the technology of today. One strange aspect of this case was that he did have a movie camera, but it never captured any evidence, for it would always malfunction when activity occurred. Had it been more cooperative, he claimed, it would have captured some extraordinary things in those moments. But this was a rare opportunity, and Gross did not let it slip away. There are many intriguing still pictures, and then there are the most famous reel-to-reel -reel tape recordings. There are said to be around 200 audio recordings of the activity now archived in Cambridge University. It would be continuous activity, especially at night. It is believed up to 30 people outside the family witness phenomena. The first would be the Hodgson's neighbor, Vic Nottingham whom the family had gone to on that first night of activity. He was a builder by trade, and he thought he would be able to quickly explain what was happening through his experience with construction. But even he became frightened when he too heard the noises 
that seemed to follow him wherever he went inside the home. After being unable to explain what was going on, they called the police and two officers were sent to the location. But of course, there was not much the police could do, although Officer Caroline Heaps did recount her experience on a BBC television report about the case some time later. Nottingham called the Daily Mirror, a London newspaper that might be called a precursor to the tabloids of today. They would send a group of reporters to the home, including photographer Graham Morris. At first, nothing happened. Everyone believed that perhaps there was nothing to the story. But upon leaving the house and going to their cars, they were called back inside when activity suddenly started to occur. They would witness marbles and Lego bricks flying around the house, and Graham Morris began snapping pictures as quickly as he could. It was then he would be superficially injured by one of the Lego bricks, when one hit him above his right eye, leaving a mark for a few days. He would continue to return to the house and would set up the time-lapse cameras that would capture some of the most controversial evidence. After the release of the article in the Daily Mirror, Morris Gross would enter the picture. Gross was a technical engineer and put his skills to use as an inventor and had done quite well for himself. It was after the tragic death of his daughter Janet in a car accident when he would become interested in psychic phenomenon and the paranormal. He would join the Society of Psychical Research. He would be tasked with going to Enfield to visit the house on Green Street. Upon visiting the family, he knew that whatever was going on, Peggy Hodgson was clearly at her wit's end. Being recently divorced and forced to live in near poverty with children was stressful enough, and within a short time of investigating the case, Gross found himself overwhelmed. He would reach out to his fellow PSR members, and Guy Lyon Playfair answered the call. The activity at the Hodgson residence displayed all the things a poltergeist is capable of, what it can do when it gains its strength. Furniture overturning, objects being thrown, or made to disappear from one place and appear in another, objects or people being levitated, spontaneous fires erupting. But there was also the most key ingredient, the presence of adolescent children. If it wasn't enough that objects were flying about or furniture was being overturned, as the case progressed, Janet Hodgson began to exhibit strange, sometimes alarming behavior. She would sleepwalk and sometimes be found sleeping in strange places, in odd, even impossible-looking positions. She would wake up in fits and have to be restrained. She would also be levitated out of her bed, an occurrence witnessed by several people. These photographs were taken by the time-release camera installed by Grand Morris early on in the case. If seen one frame at a time, it just appears Janet is jumping through the air. But when shown back to back, as in this fashion, you can see she is being guided around the room by an unseen force. On December the 12th, 1977, the most baffling part of the case would be recorded. It started off as what sounded like a dog barking, although there were no dogs in the Hodgson residence. Maurice Gross was recording and began to challenge whatever it was to speak. It started off with mumbles and grunts. Then Gross asked it to say his name. After a couple of tries, it did. But it was noticed by Gross that the voice seemed to come from Janet's direction. Upon further examination, it seemed the voice was somehow using Janet to manifest. She was not making the voices, at least not completely. It could still be heard, 
when Mr. Gross made Janet put water in her mouth, then tape it shut. Although it could still be heard, it was not as loud, as if it made a slight difference, but was still understandable. When Gross removed the tape, Janet spat out the water, so she obviously had not swallowed it. It would be impossible to make intelligible words with a mouthful of water and tape. Janet described it as coming from the back of her neck. Margaret also seemed to be connected and described the same feeling, but as with most things that happened, Margaret was not as strong a focus for the entity. The voice would be recorded numerous times. A lot of the time it would make no sense at all. Other times it would make jokes and curse. It even one time joined in singing, Row, row, row your boat. It would also answer questions. It made an appearance on the now famous BBC television show about the case. It always sounded like a gravelly voiced old man, far deeper than Janet or Margaret's voice. It seemed several entities spoke through it, most notably one claiming to be Bill Wilkins. Although the family did not know it at the time, the previous owner of the house was indeed a man named Bill Wilkins. The voice accurately described the way he died, a fact verified by Bill's son, whom they were able to find and play the tape for. He would verify that Bill had died just the way as described, and was convinced his father had indeed come through. From September of 1977 to the early months of 1979, this would be the life of the Hodgson family. I have only briefly touched upon all the activity that occurred. There were many more unbelievable things that happened. The case would come to a quiet end when a Dutch psychic that was an acquaintance of Graham Morris claimed that he could end the activity. He came to the house went to the upstairs bedroom, and meditated. When he was done, according to Guy Playfair, the activity ceased. Morris Gross, Guy Playfair, and Graham Morris were the only investigators who truly worked on this case. Ed and Lorraine Warren only visited the house for a couple of days. Guy Playfair was not overly fond of their presence and did not speak well of them. But Gross and Playfair did the best they could to help the family, and I for one believe they did. And of course, they gave their best efforts to document what seemed to stay intentionally elusive. The accusations of hoaxing have mired the facts that speak to its authenticity. There were some isolated moments when Janet and Margaret did decide to play some childish pranks, but they were quickly discovered. Many believe Janet was using ventriloquism to fake the voice, but only those who don't look deeply into the facts of this case can say this. You can find excerpts from the tapes and ask yourself if an 11 or 12 year old girl could keep a guttural gravelly voice going for even just a few minutes, let alone several hours. As for all the still pictures of Janet being levitated, look at some of the angles she is captured in. Does it work? In this one, it seems as if she were jumping. In this one, it seems if she were just jumping, she's about to hurt herself badly. I urge you to read This House is Haunted to get the best, most in-depth perspective. <laughs> 